Hello everyone, it's Helen here and thank you for joining me today. Now it's day two on my spring series and we'll be making this coaster today. We're going to be getting a little messy in a moment with some white gesso. Um, so this is a wooden coaster. Um, you can mostly get these in craft shops and I got mine off eBay. I just searched for wooden coaster and, and uh, came across the bare ones. You, want, you don't want the ones that are already decorated and done because we're making our own. And I'll also be getting, sorry, I'll also be using this Dinky Butterfly or Flutterby stamp from Intigo Blue. I bought this on my day retreat last week. So I'm looking forward to getting to know this stamp quite well. I've already trimmed it out. First off, first off we're going to be painting. We need to prep our bare wood. So just a paintbrush. <clears throat> so, yeah, so I've got my messy mat down. So we're just going to paint all this on. I think we'll be okay with one coat. You can always go over it again and do another coat. We're going to have to do this in several stages as well, just so that we're going to paint the back as well. So we need to uh, make sure that the front is dry first. So this is kind of the bit where you need to have ninja fingers. As I'm running out of holding space. I'm just trying to get this on as smooth as possible. I mean, it's starting to dry already. So yeah, you will end up with getting stuff on you. So if you don't like getting paint on your hands, you can wear gloves, I guess. It may make it a little trickier when you're trying to be careful not to smudge anything okay so i'm just going to quickly get my heat tool i don't have to preheat it this time that's just for the heat embossing but i'm just going to get this to dry mostly dry now dry to the touch and as you can see it's a bit patchy so and I can see some of the wood grain coming through again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video I'm going to do another coat on the top and I'm going to do two coats on the bottom and then I'm going to very carefully with my ninja fingers try and get this done all the way around there with the same paint as well so we're going to be stamping some nice lovely blue ink around the edges Okay, so everything's painted and it's dried. I'm just choosing my best side. Now this side looks the best one. And one thing you do, you do need to remember is to wash your brush as soon as you're finished using it, especially with the white gesso. Okay, so I'm going to just grab another brush. I'm going to use this small one here. And we're also going to um, use some black archival ink. You can also use black acrylic paint and a brayer just to get a good coverage but because we're going to be doing a lot of watercolouring on top of that um, I'm quite liking the distressed look. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up, I'm not going to mount the butterfly onto a block or anything, I'm just going to ink it as it is so I'm going to just do these little twisty motions first and then I'm going to do tap tap just to get the coverage really concentrating on the middle bit okay. absolutely adore this butterfly stamp as soon as I saw it I knew I had to get it okay, so just try your best to get this lined up And now I'm just pressing down. These stamps are mounted onto the cling, so these will stick to your block. Okay, so now I'm just going to lift that up, and there we are. It's a little faded, but we're going for the distressed look. So these are the colours we're going to be using Knight of Navy, Tempting Turquoise, Pool Party, and Dapper Denim. Love this one. So we're going to be starting off with pool party first and I'm just going to quickly squish 
the lid. That's giving us a nice palette there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure my ink is dry. go over the edge just move it in and then I'm going to take some more water and go in with the pool party so this will be our lightest colour first Okay, that's the first colour done. Let's do the other side. Okay, if these bits bother you here, you can just go over with some more white gesso before we seal with spray, which we'll be getting onto after we've painted. So just going to add some more here. It's all, it's all about layering. Okay, so that's the pool party done. Moving on to tempting turquoise. Okay, so I'm just going to gather up the tempting turquoise around here. So, just in little patches. I'm going to try and get them even. Oops, don't worry about that. I'll show you a little handy hint on how to get that off. You just smoosh it off like that with your finger. Or later on, I will show you how to remove that with a blender pen. Okay, so you don't have to actually stick with this blue colour palette. You can use whatever colour palette you wish. As long as it's a dye ink, it should work fine with water colouring. Okay, so I really want to build up these dark areas here. Okay, so now we're moving on to dapper denim. Okay, we're going to be using this in less places now. We're just building up the darker areas. We want to keep some of the lighter areas lighter. So we're just moving around now. I'm not being as neat and tidy as I was on my last one. I know that I'm almost against the clock for this one because I don't really want to give you a super long video. So 
as long as you get the gist of what I'm doing, you can then go off and you can make your own creations using the same sort of idea. It's just fantastic how ideas evolve that way. I'm just taking some, uh, just a plain paintbrush now with water in there and you can kind of just do some blending like that. Um, or if you want some more white patches, you can wet your, I know there's a patch up here, you can wet your area and then lift it up like that. I'll do the same on the other side. There we go. And then do some more blending. There's an idea just to lift the colour up, just wet the area and use some tissue. Okay, now I'm going to use some more intense colour around the edges. So these, these are still wet, so it's still going to um, move around slightly. Okay, so these these colours are dye dye inks as well, so they will sort of like with watercolour, they will fade as they dry. They're just only ever so slightly. So what it looks like now, it will look slightly different once it's dry. And you can always go back again and, and add some more colour. So I'm just gonna go quickly back to the tempting turquoise and add a bit more around here. So now I'm building up the different depths and shades of the blues in different areas. So now I know that I can make any area a lighter colour again just by doing the colour lifting. Okay, so now I'm going to finish off with Night of Navy. Just try to blend it in now to the colours. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly dry this off. And then with my paintbrush again with a lot of pigment on it, well not pigment but a lot of the colour on the paintbrush so it's not diluted. And I'm going to Try and define this butterfly body here. Okay, so I'm just adding a few more bits 
just to define the, the wings. starting to bleed a little now so I'll stop here just want that to blend up slightly okay and I'll quickly dry that off again Grabbing my blender pens. I'm just going to try and tidy this little area up here so this will actually pick the colour up. And so it's now on the nib. I'll just take it off onto the tissue. So this is just a quick way of cleaning up any mistakes. So this one's going to actually, this one's more serious. So it has bled a little more, so we're just going to neaten up that area. So lifting and wipe it off, and then lifting again, wipe off. So you can do the same when you're working on paper as well. So if you're colouring in, just use your, your colourless blender pen just to pick up any colour. Okay, that's tidied up quite well. So I've still got that little bit of bleeding there, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. There's not much I can do about that. I might keep this one just for me. Okay, so if you have any other sentiments or you wish to add your own touch to this, now would be the time. Um... I don't actually have anything that I think would go well. I mean, I have a few hello stamps, but I like the butterfly just as it is. Um, oh, actually, there's a few darker patches there. I'm just going to add those. I'm going to use dapper denim for that. So now I'm knowing when to stop. So I'm just going to quickly add some more depth here. blend that in there we go and a bit more might of navy so I just keep adding and taking away till you're happy with it yep okay I'm gonna stop now stop stop no more color let's get that dried Okay, so now that's dried, we can then go off to the garden for the next stage, so I'll see you outside. Okay, so we're in my garden, and um, you might be able to hear the birds singing. Okay, so I'm, I've got two um, varnish sprays here. This one is gloss, this one is clear. I want my coaster to be glossy, but I first need to seal it with the clear, because otherwise, because it's wood, it will just um, absorb into it. So, yeah, I've done a few experiments before, so it's best to start with the clear. So this is my plastic coat. It's a good shake. And then you just need to do quick, quick sprays like that. Get to the edges okay so now what you need to do this stuff is super stinky but um you just need to leave that to set now to dry and then come back do another coat of this 
then once that's dried you do another two coats drying in the middle of the glass okay so then what I like to do is I like to leave it somewhere dry and outside where it can air and um, I don't bring it straight into the house because it can make the room smell okay so to finish off our coaster and um, while the other one dries I'm going to put um, a coaster and uh, a cork backing on it so um, this one is a roll this is all I have left from a full roll of cork backing uh, just search for cork sheet or uh, cork sheet roll Obviously, I, I buy a lot of stuff off eBay, so this one is from eBay, but you can get them in craft shops. Or X-Cut do A5 sheets as well. Uh, I think they're self-adhesive, yep. So these are self-adhesive as well. So what I tend to use is my quilter's ruler. And the measurement we need is three and three quarters of an inch so there'll be a small border around so to cut these first I'm going to find the three and three quarters of an inch here so I'm, I'm lining up this line here so then on my I have my cutting mat down already so just cutting that down I'm going to cut a few, might as well while I'm here. So then we just move this down and then finish off the whole line. There we go, now we have a whole line there. And then we just do the same on the shorter edge. So I'm trying to stay away from the reflection here. So we need three and three quarters of an inch here. I'm lining that up. There we go. I'll cut the rest out later. So I'm just going to show you now. So add it. If you have one of those corner chomper things, a bit like one of these, but does that does the corner chomps, then you can round these corners so they they match. Um, but I don't have one of those so I'm just going to have to guess and then you can find something round to go round as well just to get the corners okay and we pop that on there see if that fits bit wonky but it's handmade isn't it obviously if I was going to make these to sell I would invest in one of those super duper corner chomper things that's not coming off paper piercer to the rescue ah almost had it there we go So I've just got to blow that off. There's a few cork crumbs that have come off. Okay, so now let's pop that on. Now this is also a good surface if you need to stamp your logo on the back or made by whoever on the back. So this will stop it from slipping around everywhere. It's nice and sealed so it's protected from your tea and coffee or any other moisture from your beer or glass of water. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. All the information will be down in the link box below. Uh, there'll be a link directly to the blog post um, for this project with a list of all the uh, materials that I've used. Um, if you like this sort of video, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in my next video.